the U.S. dollar has lost 99.8% of its value against the S&P index over that same 100 years. That is actually a closer measure to the inflation rate. This is the world's strongest currency. This is the currency backed by the country that won every war in the last 100 years. This is as good as it's going to get for you. This is as good as it gets, it will get worse. In a world filled with financial uncertainty, shifting geopolitical landscapes, and recurrent economic downturns, Michael Saylor, co-founder and executive chairman of business intelligence software company, MicroStrategy makes a compelling statement. Bitcoin is a perfect thing in an imperfect world. This assertion, while bold, holds merit when viewed through a certain lens. Inflation concerns have been on the rise as the global economy continues to recover from the pandemic. As a result, governments and central banks worldwide have been under pressure to hike interest rates to curb inflation and maintain economic stability. MicroStrategy co-founder Michael Saylor discussed various topics including Bitcoin, the death of the dollar, inflation, and the future of money at a Bitcoin conference in Prague. Among other things, the U.S. billionaire said that money is dying as highlighted by the recent avalanche of currency failures. Saylor argued that the same goes for the world's strongest currency, U.S. dollar. Saylor said that monetary inflation in weaker currencies is even higher, ranging anywhere from 20% to 100%, like in Argentina, for example. In this video, Saylor explores all the facts surrounding the unstoppable decline of the dollar and what it means for the global economy and other foreign currencies as well. As you watch, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and drop your comments below. I'd like to talk about the future of Bitcoin. So um, let's start with an observation. There is an endless economic war raging worldwide. It has been raging since the beginning of time. It is going on right now. Um, that war is over the redistribution of economic energy, and we call that wealth. Uh, but it is all of the money and the power in the world right now. And so we have a nice map of the wealth of the world here. And um, the question is, how is that uh, wealth being redistributed every single month and every single year? There are three primary drivers. The first driver is government policy. The most powerful actors in the economic war are governments everywhere in the world. They are moving money around. When I use money here, I mean economic energy or wealth. They're redistributing it. The second big driver in this economic war is technology. Um, it's, it's the advent of the Apples and the Googles, and it's electricity, and it's fire, and it's cars, and it's Teslas, and it's AIs. The third driver in this economic war is work. It's all the hard work, it's the competition, it's the energy. When you get up in the morning, you go and you work as hard as you can. Now, sad to say that the government is an order of magnitude more powerful and an economic driver than the technology. And the technology is an order of magnitude more powerful than your work. And I think you understand this. If you work as hard as you can, uh, but without a machine, or you work as hard as you can without the access to a computer, there's only so far you're going to get. Now, um, I was thinking about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin plays into all this. And you can see in my chart, Bitcoin's about $400 billion of this $900 trillion worth of global wealth. Um, you see gold is $12 trillion and equities are $115 trillion. It used to be gold was equal to equity. If you go back 50 years, it used to be gold was about equal to equity. So what happened? Well, there's a lot of technology in equity. You know, we talk about gold being a shiny dead rock, but think about gold mining and think about what uh, technology has done to gold mining in 50 years. Semiconductors don't make it easier to mine gold. Mobile phones don't make it easier to mine gold. Right? Uh, what's happened in equity? Well, you've got Tesla, you've got Apple, you've got Google, you've got Amazon, you've got the internet, you've got the telephone. So technology has shifted the balance of power from gold to equity. Government policy shifting the balance of power. Look at bonds. Bonds are, are driven very heavily by government policy. Real estate driven very heavily by government policy because government policy controls capital and cost of debt, and that drives real estate. 
And of course, there's money over here. So the most important point is the government is changing this, uh, this field. Technology is changing this field. And you, you can work as hard as you want. But you're going to have to take into account government policy and technology if you want to actually survive in this world. <clears throat> the world reserve currency is the dollar. It's collapsing against assets like the S&P index, like real estate, like gold, like art. And this is a sobering thought. Um, if we had sound money, the dollar wouldn't collapse. But you've probably seen this chart. This is the dollar collapsing against consumer goods. Consumer goods, you know, the dollar is 95% weaker. It means consumer goods are 20 times more expensive today than 100 years ago. Um, now, consumer goods are manufactured items, candy bars, bottles of water, Netflix videos. They're, uh, they're things that are coming off an assembly line and they're getting stamped out with a low variable cost. This is the cheapest, least scarce stuff in the civilization, and yet it's 20 times more expensive. According to Saylor, global governments are now facing a crisis of confidence in currencies and banks, and as a result of that, consumers are also losing confidence in fiat as money. Therefore, money is dying. It's dying in Venezuela, and it's dying in Argentina, but it's dying everywhere in the world, even in the United States and Western Europe, he said. Michael further dives into details on the measure of inflation and the comparison of the dollar to various commodities and also to various currencies being devalued against the dollar. Let us now get back into the video. How do you measure inflation? If I measure inflation against something I can manufacture for free, inflation doesn't look that high. If I measure inflation against a yardstick that is fixed, that's thermodynamically sound, then you see the true measure of inflation. S&P is one example of that. This is Miami Beach. Miami Beach runs 96 blocks. There's that much beach. A hundred years ago, there was that much beach. No amount of semiconductor technology or factories make more beach. The dollar has fallen 99.8% against the beach in a hundred years. That's how you start to see what's really going on with the world's strongest currency. Now I have some bad news for you. We're not in America. We're in another country. Foreign currencies are collapsing against the dollar. This is the Argentine peso against the dollar. In 20 years, the peso goes from 1 to 500. The peso has lost 99.8% of its value against the dollar at the same time that the dollar has lost 75% of its value against the S&P index. I'll let you do the math. If you run a company in Argentina, and you're going to work hard, you're going to have to grow your revenues from 1 million pesos to 500 million pesos over 20 years to stand still. And that's why I say no amount of hard work is going to solve the problem of being on the wrong side of an economic war. There's only one strategy here. You have to get out of that peso. You have to exit. This is the lira. This is before this week. It lost 95% of its value. Now the number is about 97% of its value against the dollar. This is the rupee. It's lost 90% of its value against the dollar. So that 99.8% loss is another 90%. So we're kind of running out of numbers to calculate just how much of your wealth has gone from you to the government. When the government actually collapses the currency 99.9%, what it means is over 100 years, they in essence take all of your wealth and they redistribute it to their cronies, to, to whoever they want. And that's the rate at which it's going. This is Pakistan, 82% against the dollar. This is the Brazilian real, 65% against the dollar. Conclusion, if you want to preserve your wealth, you have to convert that currency into an asset that's scarce, desirable, portable, durable, and maintainable, 
right? There, there are certain things that are scarce and desirable, but they don't move, like beachfront property. And by the way, maintainable, if you own a million dollars of property in Miami, you have to pay $20,000 a year, every year, to maintain it. And it gets, uh, it gets assessed up. So you have to have a million dollars to cover the taxes on a million dollars of property in Miami Beach over about 20 years. You can't maintain it. Argentina's increasingly desperate government is trying to stave off a currency crisis by going cap in hand to China and the IMF, presenting the Washington-based lender with a dilemma over how to support its largest debtor. Inflation in the South American nation is expected to reach 145% this year, a recession is looming, and the central bank's net reserves of hard currency are negligible. The peso has fallen almost 40% against the U.S. dollar on the black market this year. The Peronist government is striving to avoid a big devaluation or a lapse into hyperinflation during the politically turbulent season before presidential and congressional elections in October. An economy minister and would-be presidential candidate Sergio Massa has emerged as a central figure. Massa has announced a welter of emergency measures to keep the economy afloat, including special exchange rates to encourage soy exporters to ship their crops and swaps of domestic debt for longer maturities. He will travel to Washington later this month to seek extra IMF funds, but his task has been complicated by a severe drought, which has hit farm production and agricultural exports. Turkey eased its long-running battle to defend the lira, sending the currency into its biggest fall in more than a year as President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's new economic team implements more rational policies. The currency on Wednesday dropped 6.9% to a record low of 23.17 against the U.S. dollar, leaving it down almost 10% since this weekend's appointment of Mehmet Simsek as finance minister. The lira has not ended a day with such a big fall since December 2021, definitive data shows. The fall this week highlights how investors are increasingly expecting a shift towards more orthodox measures in the aftermath of Erdogan's election victory last month. Some analysts also expect a new central bank chief will be appointed with a more orthodox economic approach. The pace of the lira's depreciation has been rapid. Goldman Sachs said at the weekend that it expected the lira to fall to 23 against the dollar in the next three months, a forecast that came to fruition in a matter of days. MicroStrategy Michael Saylor offers the only way out of inflation and monetary disaster through Bitcoin and has been resilient in spreading its gospel. According to a recent tweet by Saylor, he says Bitcoin is a natural right. What are your views on the devaluation of the dollar? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.